Okay, so let's get into the actual math portion of our lecture today. Let's start calculating paper weight. The weight of paper is calculated using a very specific formula. I'll provide the formula to you on the next slide. Make sure that you write it down and you put it on your cheat sheet for exam number three. You are going to use the formula to calculate the weight of paper. However, before you can do that, it requires you to know the following information. So before you can do anything, when I give you a word problem, you have to identify these four things. One, how many sheets of paper do you need to buy? Two, what size paper are you purchasing? Three, what is the basic size of the paper you're purchasing? So you're going to grab that off of that chart that you should have created a couple slides ago. And five, what is the basis weight of the paper you're purchasing? 20 pound, 80 pound, 100 pound, whatever it happens to be. Once you can identify those four things, calculating the weight of paper is not very difficult at all. All you're going to do is use the formula provided to you on this slide. All the information in orange will always change. You have to find the answers and plug them in. The blue, I'm sorry, the green 500 will always be the same. It's the only thing that does not change. We're going to divide by 500 because the weight of 500 sheets is the basis weight. So we need to put it all in terms of 500. So that 500 value will always be the same. So let's try to walk through this. How much does 117,000 sheets of 24 by 36 80 pound gloss coated cover weigh? First, find the answers to the following questions. Then move on to the next slide to work through the equation. Push pause on your video to allow you time to find the answers to these four questions. Okay, so now that we have the answers to those problems, well, let's, let's back up. Let's answer them first. Step one, how many sheets of paper do we need to purchase? The correct answer is 117,000 sheets. Step two, what size paper are we purchasing? 24 inch by 36 inch paper. Three, what is the basic size of the paper you are purchasing? The basic size of every cover weight stock, no matter what it says in front of it, is always 20 by 26. And I can pull that off of the previous slide where we identified a list of basic sizes. This right here should be in your notes. You should memorize it. You'll be using it every class from now to the end of the semester. Okay, let's go back to our problem here. And last but not least, number four, what is the basic weight of the paper you're purchasing? And that is 80 pound gloss coated cover, so the answer is 80 pounds. Now that we have all four of those answers, we can plug them into our formula. So this is the size of paper we're purchasing, which we identified as 24 inches by 36 inches. We're going to divide that by the basis weight, I'm um, sorry, the basic size of the paper. We also identified that as being 20 by 26. We're purchasing 117,000 sheets of paper. We'll divide that by 500 because we always divide by 500. And we'll multiply that by the basis weight. When we fill out this problem, we have to do it in multiple steps. I can't just simply work from the left to the right and get the correct answer. I need to multiply 24 times 36 and 20 times 26 to get single numbers that I can then divide the top of the equation by the bottom of the equation. So the first step after I've identified this first row as my equation is I'm going to start simplifying across the board. 24 times 36 is 864. 20 times 26 is 520. I could then divide 864 divided by 520 and I'll get a decimal. It is extremely important never to round this number for the same reason that we don't round um, the square inches of ink coverage we do not round this decimal here. Rounding this decimal can drastically change the answer that you get when you finish the total number of pounds. So when you're calculating paper weight, do not round any numbers whatsoever until you come up with the total number of pounds at the end. Okay, the second column, I have 117,000 sheets of paper. I'm going to divide that by 500. The correct answer is 234, and then we'll just bring down 80 pounds since there's nothing we can do with that. 
Once we're down to singular numbers in each column, we can multiply straight across. So 1.66153846 times 234 times 80 should come out to 31,103.9989 pounds. Once I have this, I can round up to the next pound if I want to. However, for our class, we're going to stick to two decimal places. This is a unique example because when I round 99 to the next decimal, it automatically makes it a whole number. But just because my answer is a whole number doesn't mean that your answer for your homework should be. Always round to two decimal places.